had built several things or commanded that the children of Israel would build several things concerning the tabernacle. But everything he did, <clears throat> he was given a pattern. And he was told to follow that pattern. Hebrews confirms it. He talks about how Moses built the things of the sanctuary. But he was commanded to follow the pattern. God gave him a pattern. He was <clears throat> duplicating the furniture that was in the temple in heaven. God gave him measurements, gave him instructions, and told him the type of material in which every item was to be built. <clears throat> and then we see here in St. John 16, Jesus said that it was expedient that he would go, that the Comforter would come, the Holy Spirit. He called him the Spirit of Truth. What is truth? Thy word is truth. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Truth. He's the Spirit of the Word. He's the Spirit of God. And he said that the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, will guide you into all truth and will show you things to come. I learned a very simple lesson <clears throat> late in life, but it's important, but better late than never sometimes. I was trying to find a certain destination a couple days ago, and my phone went dead. I lost all of my navigation of information. So I stopped by St. St. Home and said, Listen, let me see your phone. Wrote down the information, and then I proceeded to my destination, which supposedly would have led me to this highway somewhere up the road. The highway that I saw on the paper was right to my right. You know, sometimes those navigational things take you all around the circle. Yeah, that's right. And when the, when the street you want is right there, that's why I always push it forward to see where it's trying to get me to go. Right. And if the main street is trying to get me to, uh, it's not too far, I'll take the shortest distance. And so I took it. And of course, Four hours later, I still was not at my destination. I had to pull over and go to sleep. Caught in the rain to wait till the fall recharged so I could uh, see where I was. And when it finally recharged, I was an hour and 16 minutes out of the way. Wow. And I couldn't understand it. Well, I believe the street highway was the same, except where I was was like at the very beginning. So it took me all the way around Atlanta. I never got around it. And I guess turning left, following those instructions would have taken me further in the direction I should have gone and put me back maybe on the same highway. You know, thing allowed me basically go to the circle. And so I, I was so upset. And then I understood better late than ever. Than, than, than never sometimes. Uh, it pays to follow instructions. When you don't know, follow instructions. Unless you don't have any. But if you have instructions and you don't know, don't guess. Follow instructions. Because God is a God of instructions. That's the point I'm trying to take. He's a God of patterns. That pattern was instructions. He gave Moses instructions as to how to build the tabernacle. And he was precise. God is a God of instructions. He hung the stars on nothing. If the sun and the moon would come, or even the sun would come any closer than the earth would dissolve. The stars, as millions of stars as there is, they don't clash. Everything stays in place. God has perfect measurement. He's a God of pattern. He's a God of instruction. And you have so many people today, when it comes to church, they think that everything has to have instructions but church. 
Everything can have a pattern but serving God. For some reason, everything was lined up, line up on line, and every dot must be, every eye must be dotted, every seat must be crossed. But when it comes to serving God, for some reason, there are no measurements. There's no pattern. There's no structure. And many people say, well, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Well, in liberty, you still have instructions. Yes, in liberty, this is a this country is supposed to be a country of liberty. And many people come here because of the liberty. But when they get here, they find out that in liberty there are 1,001 instructions in order to maintain that liberty. And then they understand why. When they get there, I thought America was the land of the free. It is the land of the free. But in this freedom, you need instructions. Because in this freedom, if you don't have instructions, some will cross their bounds of freedom and they kill other people. They steal from other people. They kidnap other people. They take matters into their own hands because it's a free world. And nobody's necessarily walking behind you like micromanagement. So you have the freedom to do what you will, right or wrong. Except in the free world, there are patterns. There are instructions to teach you how to walk in that freedom. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, he's kept the same concept. God has not given us a way of life and left us without a pattern. He's given us instructions. And he sent forth the Holy Ghost to guide us. So don't ever get upset because in serving God, there are instructions. He's a God of patterns. And he told Moses, Moses, I'm giving you the pattern. Now you make these things as I tell you. Hebrews bears witness to it. And the Holy Ghost does too. Just St. John, Jesus said, I'll send you the comforter. Now he will guide you and show you things to come. And he will guide you into all the truth. We need not, we don't need for men, meaning men of this world, to teach us. Because John said we have an anointing, the Holy One, the Holy Ghost, and he will teach us all things. And in him there is no lie. So your personal conviction means nothing to God. It's your personal conviction if it's not coming from the Holy Ghost. What you think has nothing to do with the kingdom of heaven if it doesn't come forth from the Holy Ghost. Many times we say, I don't see it that way. Don't care how you see it. We have a pattern. We have been given a guide that understands and knows the things of God and it is the spirit of God himself. Jesus said, I will not leave you comforted, but I will send you a comforter. And he calls this comforter the spirit of truth because when you receive truth, you receive comfort. To know that you are in the right way. And, and, and Jesus said, my word is true. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of the word. The Holy Spirit and the word of God will never contradict itself. And to say so is blasphemy. Who do we think we are? We don't know this way. But the Holy Ghost guides us. And I got news for you. Never will the Holy Ghost cause you to look, talk, act, or put the world first. Never. Understand that. Never. We try to put the Holy Ghost in everything we do. And that's all right if the Holy Ghost is first. But if you're trying to get him into what you're doing just to get ahead, supposing that God and this is gang, the Bible says to stay away from you. If you feel that, amen, if I put God in it, I can make money. God ain't in that. But if you put God first and you end up making money and righteousness, then God is in that. But we have a God. This flesh is geared toward the way of this world. That's why the Holy Ghost fights against our flesh. 
to keep us in the way of God. But we compromise so much and we listen to the lies. We don't have the word of God. We don't have instruction. All we've got instruction, we've got the Holy Ghost. And that's his job to guide us. Yes, Lord. If something is wrong, he will show us. Now, you be careful when you step up to the Holy Spirit. You better hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. You better hear what I'm saying. And you preachers, if you call yourself preachers, you better hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Holy Ghost don't lie. Yes, when you step up and say you are a minister of the Holy Ghost, you better be careful. Yes, because if you are compromising, if you are a liar, if you are caught up in this world, you may have been called by God, but are we sure you chose it? Because the Holy Ghost brings us out of the world. But I, you, you see, in a lot of the churches that the Holy Ghost filled, many of them started off humble, but as they became world known, many celebrities began to come to their congregation. Many rich, many celebrities coming, laying hands on the preachers and stuff, and, 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 and the many rich folks coming and, 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 the, and the Holy Ghost filled preachers kind of water down their message. Or in congregations, uh, different so-called congregations that have millionaires. Some of these Presbyterian churches and stuff have four or five, six millionaires in them. And, and they are, are, are careful how they preach. And so I thought about it. Brother preachers, I don't care how much money they have, how famous they are, where they come from, how far the stores they read. Amen. That not, if you are a real Holy Ghost filled preacher, they got nothing on you. You see, because you have the words to eternal life. You can introduce them not to some producer, but to God Almighty Himself. Y'all got it wrong. You think the church is a second class place. No, the church is the safest place on earth. As a matter of fact, the church is the only place that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. When you come into the church of God and humble yourself, care how much money you got. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We are all humble before the mighty hand of God. And we all follow the pattern that God has established us. Obey them that have a rule of We don't care what you got, where you come from. You gotta submit yourself to God and listen to the Holy Ghost. You stand up here and you decide to go against the pattern of the instruction of the word of God to damn your own soul. We think God is a second class citizen. But he's not. So you begin to compromise and slip. You think the things of God's holiness is mockery. But there's a guide in the earth who leads us in the way of righteousness. And I've got news for you. Well, I have a problem with understanding the lie about scripture. This is because this guy told us that enter in at the straight gate, for narrow is the way. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life, and only few are going to find it. So you might have a problem with it because you're on the other side. Broad is the gate. And wide is the way that leads to life and to destruction, and many shall go in therein. Majority of people will be lost. But Jesus said, I didn't leave you. All these scholars and all these debates, he didn't leave us without knowledge. He didn't leave us confidence. He gave us a spirit. And we trust him. We trust the Holy Ghost. And he guides us into all truth and shows us things to come. And that there's certain attributes that the Holy Ghost don't have. He's not a liar. He doesn't lust after sin. He's not unstable. He's the Spirit of God. Now, the question is, how many of you are being guided by the Spirit of God? And, and, and listen, listen to me. You have to listen because the majority of you are Holy Ghost filled. You have spoken a heavenly language that the Spirit of God gave the others, except you be a blasphemer. But what you need to understand is you have the presence of the Almighty God in you. You have the divine teacher in you. And wherever you go, wherever you do, you take the presence of God with you. 
I think so many times, so many church people, we are too bold with the Holy Ghost in the wrong way. We are bold enough to deliberately do wrong and stay in wrong and constantly put it on, I'm going through. Well, how about the song that says, how I look back and wonder how I got over? What about the scriptures that says the Holy Ghost, that God is able to keep us from falling? How about the word of God that says God knows how to deliver the, the godly out of temptation and sin? We constantly sin with the spirit of God in us and you don't fear? You don't have any fear? We're the temple of God full of the Holy Ghost and then we mark our bodies up with the Holy Ghost in us and we don't have no fear? We lie? We fornicate? We compromise, we dress ungodly, and don't have any fear. He said, I leave to you a guide. You telling me God has not given us a pattern? Everything else got instructions, but God has no instructions? What do you think that word of God is? And some of you are foolish enough to think that is wrong. Watch it when you step up to the Holy Ghost. Holy men spoke by the Holy Ghost and they were inspired to write according to the things of God and you call the Holy Ghost a liar. Because we think we're smart. Okay, preacher, we're so smart then when it comes time to die, we can outsmart death. I say, I don't think I'll die now. If we're so smart, why don't we change the world? We're always crying. Everybody's crying about warming, warming the, the earth being warm, over warm, freezing this, this, that, this, this, earth. How can we stop this? But if we are so smart, why don't we change it? Why don't we fix it? You all not hear what I'm saying? What I'm trying to tell you is, what I'm telling you, what I'm trying to tell you is get out of the mirror because it ain't that pretty. You're not that smart. You need God. You need the pattern of the Holy Ghost. You need guidance. We all need guidance. We have not come this way before. God told the children of Israel, when you cross the land and you cross over, let the priest go first with the Ark of the Covenant because you have not been this way before. Well, Bishop, I'm confused because you're jumping ahead of God. You're following yourself and every other damnable doctrine and thing. You're following this world and get upset because the Holy Ghost says, the Holy Ghost says, adorn yourself with modest apparel. The Holy Ghost said not to drape yourself with jewels and gold and fancy your ring. The Holy Ghost said in vain do you paint your face and arch your eyebrows and do this. The Holy Ghost said women looking like men and men looking like women shouldn't be. And you got a problem with that? And your job is paying you $25 an hour, say you're freaking there for too long, clip it. Then you come back the next day, clip it. They tell you your dreadlocks can't go. You just told somebody I ain't cutting my dread for nothing. They pay you $35 an hour or something less than that. You come back, clip it. But you want to compromise God's word. And you want to damn God's word, damn the law. Question the law, if you like me. Question the law book. Do we stop on red? Do we go on green? If A, B, C, A, B, C, if one, two, three, one. We question that. And we accept everything. We accept everything as true. But we want to deny God's word. Oh, that let me say It's better you correct me, a man, than try to correct God, the Almighty. But the God of this world, the devil, has got a body. You preachers hear me? Come on now. God ain't got no duty to shoot preachers. Want to look like bishops, act like bishops. How many devils have they cast out lately? How many people have you healed? Well, Bishop, I don't heal anybody that the Lord does. Like I said, how many people have you healed lately? I said the Lord heals. We don't do it. Well, I know God heals, but it's everything you don't. Paul said the power of God working in me. 
Madeline. Now they by my power that I do. And by the power of God, Paul is a woman in the Madeline.